months. So, so that's awesome. But continue to give to the sheep ministry. Also, the other Patty. Patty has another announcement. Two Patties today. I have here um, a printout of what we have for your addresses. If you would check them, make sure it's correct. There's no changes. If there are changes, you can change them on the sheet. If your name is not on the sheet, behind this is um, blanks to fill in. And so if you can fill in, then we can um, add you to our sheet. So this is like your wedding invitation. You've got to sign your name up. But we are going to be putting together a new church directory. Uh, we're going to be working on that. Uh, we will wait for the new building to get done and everything. But we will be doing a new photo directory. Uh, and we'll have that available online and also and print it out for you. So, But we do want to make sure that information is, is accurate. Uh, for our object lesson today, uh, today I'm wearing my dad's dress. You know, and it's uh, when I cleaned out my dad's house and he passed away a couple weeks ago, he gave me all of his clergy robes. So I've got different clergy robes. Some may question if I can wear white or not, but today we wore, <laughs> we, we, we wore white. But one of the other things is I was cleaning out my dad's house and, and I couldn't bring furniture and other things. I was limited on things that I could bring from my dad's home. But one thing I found when I was looking for things, this is the top of my mother's wedding dress, and I found my mother's whole wedding. Look how tiny it was. You know, I was going to wear it today. <laughs> I think they said she was like 112 pounds or something, I think, when they got married or something like that. So it looked like for a little child, you know, Cora could probably fit in it. Probably. Cora, Cora, Cora could bottle for it. But I was able to find this, and it was all wrapped up in... in um, uh, paper and wrapped up in an old Kaufman's box, you know, back from in the 19, 1950s, you know, and it's all pressed and dry clean and it's ready. And, and I think, well, what should we do with my mother's old wedding dress? Do we throw it away? Do we keep it? Do we save it? What do you do with something like this old garment? And today we're here today because we need to get our old garments ready. Because it talks about in the Bible about how Jesus is going to come for his bride and that we have to be ready. And when anybody's planning a wedding, all they worry about one of the first things they think about, we've got to get the dress. You know, there's even TV reality shows about picking out the dress and bridezillas and all those other things you know, as, as they go through. But sometimes I think the church is like a bridezilla. You know, I think we miss the work. We think it's all about the dress. We think it's all about the clothes. We think it's all about the celebration. But we forget about the consummation. We forget about the engagement. We forget about why we are coming together in, in the first place. So today is a day as we, as we play on this a little bit, as we think about Jesus Christ as the, as the bride of Christ. The white robe that I wear was not from when my dad got married back in the 1950s, but he wore this whenever he baptized people. And he, in his later years, he, he worked at uh, the First Christian Church, and they did immersion uh, baptisms. So he would put on the white robe whenever he baptized people. And, and looking back, uh, probably one of my most memorable moments of that is Angela is here. Angela uh, is here. She was a teenager in my youth group in my very first church. I went there, what, we figured out last night, about 26 years ago. I went to Mount Zion, and when I went there, one of the things they did, they had a big lake up by her church. It was called Henry's Lake. And we brought together the three churches that I pastored, and I think we had like 20-some people join the church that day. And uh, we had kids out in canoes, and they rode in, and we act like Jesus was calling them the disciples. And we went through the temptations of Christ, and, and then we baptized Angela and a whole bunch of other people on that day. And it was her birthday, it was the day of her birthday, and, and it was also her baptism. So she's one of the few people who can say she has two birthdays in, in, in one, and it was a celebration and a time of remembering. And just like I found my mother's uh, wedding dress and it's reminder of that commitment that she made. I want to invite Angela up front. Come up front. We're embarrassed. You. Come on up front today. Uh, in our church, we have a tradition of making prayer shawls. And so as you make the journey down here today, we'd like to give you a prayer shawl to remember your baptism, mm. remember your faith journey. <laughs> and we're thankful to have you. So let's just pray. Oh God, we thank you that Angela is here and for all those who have gone on before us. We just pray a blessing upon her in each and every one of us that we may renew this covenant that we make to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for coming. Amen. Now let us continue the celebration as the choir shares our special music for today. Forgot him last week.
as we celebrate this day, will you join with me in praying the prayer found in your bulletin as we pray for the bride of Christ and as we ask for God to cleanse and purify us as we gather in this his home and as we prepare to receive him as the groom. Let us pray as the bride of Christ together. Father, I intercede for your church, your bride. I present her before your throne room. I am asking that she would experience the emotions that are in your heart towards her. May a river of your love flow to the heart of your bride, causing her focus and commitment to be on Jesus, the author and the finisher of her faith. Lord, may her understanding of Jesus as her bridegroom increase. I pray that she would have a divine revelation of your character through the light of your word. May the seed of your word go deep into her heart and bring forth fruit that remains for your glory. Father, strengthen the weary ones today by your spirit. Reveal the mystery that will unlock the wounded hearts of those who have been persecuted, rejected, abused, or offended. I pray that each one would be open to receive healing from your presence. Reveal to your bride that you will never fail, reject, hurt, or divorce her. Let her know that even in her weakness, you love her. She is made strong as she embraces your grace. Give your bride wisdom so that she may know how to continually abide under the covering of your love and not be moved in and out of your presence. I pray that she would have confidence in your love, knowing that you are patient and kind. Lord, I thank you that as she has an intimate realization of your love, that she will no longer be fearful, condemned, shamed, or postured into guilt. May your bride arise and shine. May she stand strong in you and in the power of your might. Amen. I always read these words in every way from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And may these, may we be able to substitute our own names in the name of the church in place of love. For this is our commission. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now let us give our wedding gifts and our tithes and offerings to the Lord. <laughs> 